All right, welcome back. In the last episode, we added NodeMon, so now we can reload the server and the client-side code. Before we wrap up our section on building the ultimate development environment, I wanted to remind you that Node is as debuggable as anything run in the web browser. As of version 61 of Chrome, we now have a way to debug Node in the web browser. Let's set that up. In our package JSON, let's change NodeMon and add the flag inspect. Now when we rerun our dev server, we see that we have a debugger listening on this WebSocket port. If we pull up our dev tools, we see now we have this button. This is the node logo. Now if we press this button, we get a new window. Our debugger is listening on port 9229. So if we add localhost 9229, which is the default, we have full control of our node environment. Notice the console is looking at the main context of node. It also looks exactly like the output in our terminal, without the colors. We have hash, version time, hash version time. This strange denotation is actually a way to tell terminal to make these things a color. So it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough. Now in sources, we see that we have the entire node library at our disposal. Now as far as server-side code, we only have one file, Express.js. Let's add a debugger to Express.js and see what happens. Save it. It reloads and immediately takes us to the Sources tab and pauses right on the debugger. That's really cool. So now we can look around and see here's our static middleware. We're able to add watch variables and look at the call stack all the way up and down. You can see Express is right here, but we also have some Webpack code. If we expand this out, the variables of each of these things are denoted in the red color. We're able to look at pretty much everything in here. Now this will come in handy later, but I wanted to show you that no matter what, you can always type in debugger, reload, and you'll get to exactly the place in the code you want to get to. Now the same works for client-side code. Let's resume the debugger, and now we have a listening server. Let's put a debugger statement in our client-side main.js right underneath the index.html. We save. We know it, notice it opens it up directly where we put the debugger statement. Now there is one big difference we should notice. These require statements are replaced by webpack require. Now what this tells us, we're not actually working on the same code. This is the transpiled code. In order to get the exact same code, we're going to need to make a change. The debugger is paused on line 3612, not line 5. In order to get the right line numbers, we're going to need to make a change to our webpack config. You guessed it, we're talking about source maps. So let's resume back in our webpack config. Under dev server, let's put dev tool source map. Don't forget the comma. Now when we save, it'll be reloaded our debugger statement. Let's take that out. All right, it reloads and it pauses on line five. Exactly the same. If you notice, we also have a hint here in the comments. What file we're in? Main.js. And at the bottom it says source mapped from main bundle JS. We're no longer looking at the bundle, we're looking at the original file. This makes it a lot easier to debug our code. If you notice in our output, we have one more file, mainbundlejs.map. This is going to be a bigger file than our main bundle. We don't need to mess with this directly. This file is something for Chrome to pull in when the dev tools are open. It won't be used in production, it'll just be used in our development environment to make our lives a whole lot easier. In this episode, we introduced a debugging experience with both client and server-side code. We'll be using the debugger and the rest of the dev tools throughout this course. We also discussed source maps and how easy it is to use them with Chrome and Webpack. Now this setup is the ultimate developer experience. Hot reloading, reactive programming, with a live debugging session from the comfort of the same dev tools we've always used in the client. Gone are the days of console log. Long live debugger.